there's a book that we've seen that's in libraries and lots of schools that features a story of uh, two daughters having sex with their dad. Oh, wow. They get their dad drunk to have sex with him. Oh and God. this is like a book. Oh Should a book like that be in no. a school? No. No? No. Just get that out of the school. Absolutely. Why, why do the kids need to read that? That book is actually the Bible. No. Oh, no. Yeah. No, no. No. <laughs> Yes, yes, that's the Bible and that's just the ground floor for the delights revealed in the Old and New Testament. Anyway, that was an excerpt from a recent TikTok from The Good Liars. Getting into a little bit of the hypocrisy of the right wing, the new wave of book bannings and cancellations that they're doing. They spent a year railing against cancel culture and this year it's all, I don't want you to be able to read this book. So it's been a fun little back to back set of years for them. Um, but although there they sort of back off the banning of the Bible, uh, the banning spree has gone insane. And it's actually now stretching sort of beyond even the individual attempts to ban books. Let me give you some information coming from a report by NBC News, uh, who did a profile of a few different schools and students who had up until recently been able to have what they called a safe haven library, where they were able to read books with uh, characters who were members of the LGBTQ community, read uh, depictions of sex that they hadn't seen in popular culture. Uh, That's all gone now, those books are getting banned. Hundreds of titles have been pulled from libraries uh, across the state, uh, sometimes over the objections of school librarians, several of whom say they face increasingly hostile work environments and mounting pressure to preemptively pull books that might draw complaints. This is taking place in Texas. So. There's the individual books that get banned, and then there's the culture, what you might call a cancel culture, where the librarians are so scared about getting in trouble that they are themselves looking for books to pull so that they can avoid complaints. NBC News apparently looked at a sampling of 100 school districts. There's way more than this, so bear in mind that for the numbers. 75 formal requests by parents or community members to ban books from libraries during the first four months of the school year. In comparison, only one library book challenge was filed at those districts during the same time period a year earlier. So it's 75 times worse in one third the time. A handful of the districts reported more challenges this year than in the past two decades combined. That is quite a culture that they're brewing up down there, Sabrina. I just I think it's still so funny. How do we get from Tucker Carlson calling uh, <laughs> Saki a uh, little fascist for putting a disclaimer or or for being okay with putting a disclaimer on you know Joe Rogan's podcast on Spotify, but books from the mm-hmm. school library got to get them out. How do they not see how hypocritical that is? When I say yeah. they, I mean like conservatives, and I imagine that these must be conservative parents who are making these requests. Yep, yeah, they are. It's conservative parents and also the astroturf social movement that this represents. So um, it would be easy and sometimes accurate to look at the people who are pushing for this sort of thing, the right wing politicians and the right wing pundits and say, like we might say, do you not realize what world you're creating? That you're gonna create you know, uh, kids who are completely ignorant of, of history that, um, don't see themselves in the work, all of that. And look, some of them know what world they're creating and they want it. They are Christian fascists. They want that sort of world to be reflected in our education system. But for others, I want to be very clear. I don't think Tucker Carlson cares at all about these books, any of them. Some kid in Austin can go to a public library and read a book about like a, a gay relationship. He's not losing sleep over that. This is not about the outcome, it's about the process. Because if we have a year or two of a ton of parents getting activated to go and make death threats at you know school board meetings and harass librarians, what those parents are not doing is looking critically at the GOP and wondering why they're not advocating for their actual economic interests. Things that are actually core to your life, the quality of life that you'll have. It is just very useful to spin people up and send them out, get them active politically in this way. Regardless of what world it creates, these are now dedicated active members of the GOP. I think that that's all that you need to know about this, honestly. No, absolutely. I think that it's it's very 
understandable that like some of these parents are going to be able to like band together, try to get these books banned from schools. And I don't think it's unrealistic to see them later as we get closer to, you know, a presidential election. I think they would be like, okay, well, it wasn't that hard to like be active for this cause. I could, I could go stomp. I could go rally for these candidates and yeah. in turn increase their numbers, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you've been made terrified and as we get closer to the election, the right wingers will terrify you about other things. You will live the rest of your life in constant fear while you know claiming constantly and loudly that you're the one who's all free and all that. Anyway, let me give you a little bit more information that we've covered previously about the content of the books that are generally being targeted. All but a few of the challenges target books dealing with racism or sexuality. The majority of them featuring LGBTQ characters and explicit descriptions of sex. Often they are written by either people of color, people from the LGBTQ community. Um, so they are being targeted. One parent though asked the district to remove a children's biography of Michelle Obama, arguing that it promotes reverse racism against white people. So she's worried about racism sort of while engaging in an act of it. A parent in the Dallas suburb of Prosper wanted the school district to ban a children's picture book about the life of black Olympian Wilma Rudolph because it mentions racism that Rudolph faced growing up in Tennessee in the 1940s. They weren't claiming it was inaccurate. They just didn't like that it was discussed at all. This is the most pathetic, ignorant, weak approach to the world. And I get that they're scared. I get that they have you know, millions and millions of dollars being pumped into a right wing media infrastructure that's trying to terrify them constantly. But we should be able to expect more of parents than going around banning picture books. That's anyway. so wild to me, Just like sad. especially if it comes to like like athletes um, who are like people of color, like they'll talk about like, oh yeah, we we like these athletes and we like that there's like books about them, but they don't want to talk about and they don't want the students to learn mm -hmm. about the actual challenges that those athletes had yeah. to face to get there in regards to like the racist challenges, you know? A hundred percent. Yeah, no, you're you're totally right. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.